Good evening and welcome to another edition of Bayonne Today. Uh, we have uh, someone who's been here before, someone who's around about town, and someone who in about five years will hit that magic mark of 100 years old. Al celebrating his 95th uh, birthday. Al Resnick of famous Resnick's Hardware from 46th Street and Broadway. Formerly it was his Harry Resnick who owned the place. We had Al on the show a couple of years ago. But here today we're talking about Al in celebration of 95 years. And Al's going to tell us about the changes he's seen in Bayonne and in the world in, in, in the many, many fine years that he's had. Uh, welcome again, Al, to our show. Good to see you again. A uh, uh, funny thing about Al, I may have mentioned it the last time, but Al, I would say for almost 40 years, has been a computer, uh, I wouldn't say geek, but he's also been very computer savvy. When we were in the Rotary together, I'd stop by the store and Al would be on the computer. And I remember the first time I'm looking at him and, and I said, this is super. Here's a guy who's, uh, well, 25 years ago, that was still, he was 70 years old starting it. And who would have thought uh, that 70 year olds would, would get into it? Now Al's still 95, he's 95 years old and he's on the computer and he sends me all sorts of great uh, words of wisdom that I can live by. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start with this one. And, and, uh, but first, Al, you said something before we started the show about Confucius. What did Confucius say about birthdays? Uh, Confucius say uh, uh, birthdays are good for you because uh, you live longer. I mean every time you have a birthday you know you've, you've got another year that's into right. yourself. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. One of the things that Al sends, and again what he sends is these words of wisdom that you can live by and it had to do with stress. The first part has to do with stress and, and, and Al says everybody has it. We talked about this. A young lady confidently walked around the room while leading and explaining stress management to an audience with a raised glass of water. Everyone knew she was going to ask the ultimate question, half empty or half full? She fooled them all. How heavy is this glass of water, she inquired with a smile. Answers called out ranged from 8 ounces to 20 ounces. She replied, the absolute weight doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute, that's not a problem. If I hold it for an hour, I'll have an ache in my right arm. If I hold it for a day, you'll have to call an ambulance. In each case, it's the same weight, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. She continued, and that's the way it is with stress. If we carry our burdens all the time, sooner or later, as the burn becomes increasingly heavy, we won't be able to carry on. As with the glass of water, you have to put it down for a while and rest before holding again. When we're refreshed, we can carry on with the burden, holding stress longer and better each time practiced. So as early in the evening as you can, put all your burdens down. Don't carry them through the evening and into the night. Pick them up tomorrow. Al, you've been through so many burdens of life, so many things that you've seen times of stress. Uh, uh, my co-producer, Andy, wanted to hear about the stories that you saw of Prohibition when you were a kid. Uh, you lived, you were born during World War I, you saw Prohibition right here, even in Bayonne. Yeah. Um, did you ever see a speakeasy here in Bayonne when you were a kid? <clears throat> and, and on many corners in Bayonne, there were speakeasies. Uh, they were tolerated, I don't remember why, but uh, there were speakeasies. Uh, uh, liquor wasn't legal, but somehow uh, there was people in the bars. Uh, there was no problem with that, right? It doesn't seem to be. <laughs> At that time, it doesn't seem to be. I remember on the corner of 46th Street uh, was Wake's, uh, Wake's uh, Dance Hall, I guess it was called at one time. On 47th Street, there was Muller's Tavern. Um, uh, you, you, at that time, your takeout, when you did takeout, uh, you had a schooner. They called the it growler? a schooner. A the five quart, a five quart tin bucket with a cover and a bail handle, and and uh, you you got it filled up, and uh, uh, um, you'd appreciate it when it didn't pour it into the into the 
bucket so fast because the, you had to get a half a bucket of head. <laughs> more fun than beer? beer yeah. More fun than so beer. So if they poured it in slow, you got your money's worth. So did, 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 I mean, I, I'm sure there's no one alive who would be able to vouch for this or deny it. Were you ever sent to, to bring buckets of beer home? No, they, they didn't give it to the kids. No? No, they didn't, they didn't give it to the kids. Uh, when, so, when they had um, free lunch, like cheese or something, my father would bring me out a sample. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't remember going into the tavern. Now, 1931. Now you go into a tavern just to buy a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now we have, coming up is 1931, we have the opening of the Bayonne Bridge. You remember yeah. being there for that great, great ceremony? Yeah, I was, uh, I was there uh, with my trusty camera. I, I used to be a, a little bit of an avid photographer, and uh, I uh, was taking pictures. I've got some pictures of the, of the procession of cars going into the, into the uh, Bayonne Bridge, and one of the cars was an open car with uh, uh, FDR uh, in the car. Um, I guess uh, he was the governor was, of New York. I guess at the New time. York yep. at that time, yeah. And uh, there was a lot of other people there at that time. A big, big crowd of onlookers, and uh, being a uh, the uh, looking for better pictures to take, I started walking up the arch of the bridge, yeah, uh, until I almost got to the top, and then we got, I was following a couple other fellows, and we finally got chased down, so we, we went, I got they off They thought you there. were gonna jump, I maybe? I didn't get a chance <laughs> even to take pictures from there. Well, let's, let's, let's follow through from 31 on. You, the depression was going on, uh, uh, times, times the, the was depression hard. was was wicked. Uh, I understand it's about fifty percent unemployed at that time. People, you, all, you, you hear stories that uh, they were on the corner selling an apple if they can get a nickel for an apple. You know, well everything was was very cheap. A dollar bought a lot. Now, a dollar bought uh, uh, what you'd pay ten dollars for today or more. Uh, so you can't you can't compare money. Do you remember uh, any any food lines and bread lines and and and, and well and yeah well you've got them today too you know it, it's more or less refined today but uh, there were lines of people for for food um, there was a, you didn't have you didn't, until uh, uh, FDR got into uh, the presidency. And he got uh, young people working. Uh, uh, like the WPA projects and yeah, things like that? Thing, uh, Broadway was paved with WPA projects. Uh, there was a, in the bandstand in the county park, uh, they had every Sunday, they had a, a musician, uh, uh, a band, a music band playing there for a couple of hours. They were all salaried from the WPA funds. But you, you barely had radio back then, right? I mean, you had you did have radio. Well, you but had that's radio. Better. You had a, a, a few channels on a radio. You know, WJZ, WOR, maybe WABC, just three or four channels. Do, do, do you York remember channels. listening to Roosevelt during those times when he? Yeah, did in his, the evening. The only only good time uh, to listen to was the evening. You had uh, different like. Uh, uh, different comedians. You had Amos and Andy. You had uh, we have Andy here, the, but the no Shadow. Amos. Shadow. Uh, 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 there were lots, lots of old, old uh, shows. Uh, singing too. You had singing uh, shows. My oldest son was uh, about eight or nine, and uh, uh, there were very few televisions around. Uh, so he went two or three blocks to a candy store. In the window of the candy store was a, a television, <laughs> was a television. Set, and everybody in the evening was gathered around. All the people that didn't have television were gathered around. Well, we uh, didn't like the idea of a small kid going there right. uh, in the evening, you know, dark already. 
that's how we ended up with our first television set. Well, let me ask you this, Al. Getting getting through the depression and, and getting into the forties, what was what was your feeling, if you could remember, of say Hitler's invasion of, of of the various parts of Europe and what they were doing to the Jews and other other minorities? What kind of what kind of news were, were was were you remembering that you heard well, uh, here in the you, states? You, you hear about the. And the, the big fights uh, uh, where, where so many uh, French were getting killed, so many Germans were getting killed, you know, they were really shooting at each other and a lot of fatalities. And uh, uh, you didn't hear too much about the Jewish situation. You didn't hear much about the Holocaust? Was that like You didn't suppressed? hear much about the Holocaust when a, when a shipload of, uh, of uh, Escapees, refugees, say, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, came to this country and they were refused admission, and they had to go back there and uh, and they ended up in the furnaces. You know, that was a, um, it was the the feelings at the time. You know, you you didn't only have anti-Semitism in the, in Europe; you had some in this country. Oh, absolutely, too. yes. Yeah. So yeah. that was that. So 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 what was what was but the one of the important things that uh, I remember very very remember is MacArthur. He got into Germany, you know, cleaning up, cleaning up when it, after the war. You after about. the war, and he had his his photographer taking pictures. He says, nobody's going to believe this. He says, we got to take pictures. Now, that was, that was good thinking at the time because nobody would believe what they saw. Because mm -hmm. I had a friend that was with, with him at the time, and he saw, you know, he was in that group that first invaded uh, the, the, the camps. Right, right. And uh, they saw... Horrors. It was, it was horrible. And like you said, no one would Even believe it without, without that. You don't believe. And, you, don't believe and, you don't believe it. Not so many years ago. And, and to this day, it's it's so hard to to understand how anybody like the the leader of Iran saying yeah. that it never happened. It never it happened. Just, it just. Yeah, yeah. It just. It just. Yeah, they just I, do I, this it's, to, it's hard for to any, annoy you. It, it, but, it, it, but it's hard. To, they know. They know it's not true. And yeah, they only do this to needle needle you. Just makes no sense. I, I, know. I know it just it makes, makes no, no sense. sense. Um, and, uh, what were what were like you said uh, going back though? You loved photography. There were dance halls. I guess was what was going on. How about yeah. the Victory Theater? Do you remember what in was going Victory on in the Victory Theater? Theater? I remember uh, it was it was a dance hall when I was a kid. I remember my parents taking me there in the evening and put me to sleep across a couple of chairs. <laughs> yeah. They would and go they see people dancing. like Frank Sinatra or yeah. these, these big I don't remember what happened after I went to sleep, but I remember, I can remember vividly being there. And, they had uh, vaudeville acts, they had all sorts of other yeah, great that things was going the, the entertainment you did, you know. Um, everything was different. The kids, the kids played outside, you know, Kids played outside uh, those days. Uh, Stickball, stoopball, yeah, anything street, else they could, the, you the could get. The streets had two, very few cars, and when there was a car coming down the street, you could hear them because cars were noisy at the time. Today, cars are quiet, but the cars were noisy at the time, and, and we get out of the way, but we played stickball. They didn't we drive played other fast. games in the street. Uh, football season, we, we played football. Uh, things were different. Kids were different. How, how uh, for, you know, we try to um, stress respect for the, the people of, uh, of authority, for example, uh, the people who are the police or the firemen and, and the like. Uh, what, was, what, was your, what was your feeling? What, what, how were you brought up that, that that 
this is what it is. You have to make sure that you respect the police officer because he's the one that protects you in the neighborhood. That's right. And that was that was that was you pretty well, much universal, right? You, you, first of all, kids were taught respect for their elders. You don't see that today. They don't even have respect for their parents. Uh, in school, it's disciplinary, discipline, discipline problems. Uh, so uh, the, the children, the children respected their parents, respected the police and the firemen, your teachers. You know, they all. Uh, Kids more or less behave better than they do today. Thinking, thinking, going, and, and taking that ed education as a as a as a thing that you had lived through. When I when I look at what you were taught when you were children in school, the rudimentaries they, they always call it the R, the three R's: reading, writing, arithmetic. Yeah. Um, you guys all came out very well without any high fluting other things. With the well, with knowing, having a strong foundation in those you, rudimentary you have so many things. other things that have to be covered today that you didn't have then in education. That there's no time for extracurricular activities. There used to be various shops in the schools. Uh, uh, the Vortex man the had a print shop. Washington School had a, a sheet metal shop. Some people tell me, say, was, what's a print shop? That's, yeah, it's, it was a print shop. No, but I'm it. saying today, p kids don't know what a print shop was because they yeah. never saw well, one. Well, you were taught how to set type by hand the way it was always done, you know. And drafting you, tables. You yeah, remember the drafting tables? Kids used to learn drafting of yeah, this and that. Had now a, it's all computerized. You had a, a carpenter a wood shop. I attended wood shop in high school and machine shop. Uh, and machine, machine shop, shop at night. Well, that was later. I was a machine shop, but uh, I went to machine shop uh, uh, night school. Uh, auto auto repair. They had also they had an auto repair yeah, shop over there. Uh, people brought their cars there because they got them fixed cheaper than <laughs> <laughs> bringing them down to yeah. the corner. <laughs> uh, what you know. What do you think you miss the most of the old days? And, and excluding, of course, your, your, your late wife, Fran, who, uh, who is a real gem in our community and a good, good, good gem to me, but aside from family things, what do you think you miss from the old days that you wish you had back? Uh, my youth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, keeping in mind that Confucius say you have another yeah. birthday and you're, you're living a little bit longer. But uh, seriously, um, you can't you can't revive life as it used to be. Uh, things change not only in in uh, in. Uh, Occupations and in, and in technology, uh, but uh, every once in a while I get a list of of all kinds of things written by somebody that's only fifty years old. You know that, was that wasn't in, that wasn't me. invented. They were born before all these things well, were invented. Yeah, and, and and for example, you grew up. There was already a car, right? Yeah, you already had a car when you were born. Um, radio was coming out, telephones yeah. were coming out, um, telegraph was going out. I mean, it, there was big technology back then, a telephone. Tele telegraph was, uh, was, was becoming obsolete. Right. But you used to send a, a telegram, uh, uh, Western Union, you want to uh, wish somebody uh, uh, good wishes, you know, like at a reception. Uh, telegrams came, you know. Uh, that all well, I, but but even though in the late sixties, I remember friends of ours eloped to Elkton, Maryland, and they were broke, so we went to Western Union Shop in Journal Square to send them fifty dollars so they could they could you know, make their way back to Bayonne. I, I remember phone call to California was twenty dollars. Whoa, and the way it was done, 
is you told the operator your, the number you want, and then you hung up and you wait until they made all the connections, and then they called you back and tell you your, your call is ready. Twenty dollars. Yeah. Now, you know. Uh, that was like a week's wages almost for some you people. You know, uh, when when my one of my sons had his son his son doing a semester in Australia, and he was skyping him, talking face to face, mm -hmm. just like they were in the same room together. And there was no charge. Right. For, excuse, so for that's, calls. Where, that's where we've gone. You're talking about, yeah, from here to and here. I heard, I heard yesterday one of my sons said, did you see in the paper that they developed a car that goes by itself? Yeah, I've been working on that for, yeah. for, for, for so, a long so time. So you know where we're going in the future. Right. You won't need a steering wheel. The car will just go by but, itself. But, but, but the same token now, as much as you've seen knowledge expand, I mean, there's every day you yourself see so many things you can't possibly learn in a day, the new things that That's happen. Right. That's right. Um, how deep sea is being explored, how the universe, they're still trying to get to the end of the universe if they can get it. How many, the last pictures from Hubble, there are only 5,500 galaxies out there that are, that are so billion years away right. from us. Uh, and, and I'm sure when you were born, there was no thought that um, we would ever get to the moon or that anybody would ever land the moon yeah. or, or, or have any, any spacecraft go to Mars or any place like that. Um, technology is, is advancing. Unfortunately, we uh, don't have the wherewithal uh, to invest more, I guess, in, in exploration like that, the things that, that makes our lives curious. That's right. uh, yeah, we're, we, we keep going forward uh, with, with technology. New, new things are developed every day, uh, but you, you don't notice it. If slowly it, change, it like slowly you said. slowly change. Things change very you don't slowly. Know it, uh, you look back and you say, well, you know, uh, I remember uh, we were cleaning up one of the buildings that we were selling, and we found a, a computer, a great big monstrous thing. And uh, we ended up donating it to the Monmouth Computer Museum. They were happy to, to take it. And when I showed one of my daughter-in-laws a photo of it, she says, oh, I operated one of those in two guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, it, I mean, I was just looking at a photo the other day when we had the old cathode ray tube uh, monitors that were the sizes of yeah. the old TVs, and now everybody's got flat screens and thin yeah. screens and, what about and ultra the rabbit books ears? and rabbit ears for the TVs yeah. and, and, and so on and so on. Uh, and, 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 and just think about this, uh, it was only, it wasn't even 50 years ago that Nixon went to China. We never thought we would deal with China. Uh, All uh, we knew about China was those little and things. And another big item was, was uh, television tubes. Right. You used to have a machine to test your, your Right, I remember, to going to the, your tube. I remember going to the store with the, yeah, with the batch and, of tubes and, and, and testing test, them out. Testing tubes. Yep, those little Till the transistors come out and that was the end of that business. Yep, yeah. Well, well, transistors is what made computers what they are today. That's right. Considering the, the old IBM machines were, were with, with those CR tubes yeah. and, and they were just too big, too hot, too unwieldy. Um, and then they used to sell uh, radios, televisions, but a number of tubes are in them. And right. then they found out that some of the tubes are only dummies to improve the price. <laughs> <laughs> Emerson didn't do that, did they? <laughs> uh, well, what do you think, if, if you were to live another 25 years, say, what would you like to see in the world that you haven't seen yet? Have you ever thought about uh, f flying cars, for example, or? No. 
what do you what, what would you what would you think if if you had if if you if you were living another twenty years, other than good health, which of course you can't buy. Yeah, I know. Other than good health, uh, what kind of technology would you would you like to see out there? You, you, you're making an inventor out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were a photographer. You saw a lot of things. And listen, you know, you're, you're uh, in a business of hardware. That's a, everything. I can't you're creative. Be a fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you know that uh, uh, I I got involved in, in computers when computers were uh, we we got computers and uh, our cash registers became computerized. And then I was saying, what, 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 what am I going to do with a computer? What am I going to do with a computer? And uh, then we had a, a, a tenant that uh, was teaching computers, had computer classes, and he invited me to come no charge. So I went and, and took some, a uh, couple of computer lessons from him. I didn't want to bother him too much. I went a few times. But that got me interested in getting a computer, and, and that was the beginning. And like you said, they were this big. I remember going uh, to uh, back in the early '80s uh, to a public service place where a room this big was filled with these old computers that were as powerful as that one that you just got rid of in the old store, yeah. which, by the way, was less powerful than what we have here right here on the phone. I just want to. Um, go through as we finish uh, a couple of the things you just said to me. Uh, for example, uh, the things that you had said, if you lend someone $20 and never see that person again, it was probably worth it. These are gems, Al, which I could, I could, I could say that somewhat are, are, uh, are attributable to you. It may be that your sole purpose in life is simply to serve as a warning to others. And uh, never put both feet in your mouth at the same time, because then you won't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> and I think with that, Al, uh, I, 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 I wish you, uh, uh, as we say in the, in the Polish words, uh, stolat, which was maybe, may you live 100 years. But I know that's only five years from now, so maybe we'll double that for okay. you. <laughs> and, and may you live uh, a healthy one. And, and uh, I know you love your family. I see you around with them. And... Um, continue uh, being such a great uh, citizen of Bayonne. Thank you, Al. Thanks for being on the thank show again. Thank you, too. And thank you for being part of Bayonne Today.